Now on GMU at 6, snowy conditions forcing schools, businesses to change in-person plans today. We'll keep you updated on which places issuing delays or closures. And that winter weather forcing Salt Lake County to postpone vaccine appointments today. Here when those appointments are now being rescheduled. Good morning. Residents waking up to a lot of fresh snow in the valleys and along the east benches, really region-wide. Lots of travel impacts. Coming up, we are live with a warning from the Utah Department of Transportation. Plus, we are tracking all the heavy snow here moving through the Salt Lake Valley and northern Utah, all coming up in Utah's most accurate forecast. Live from Utah's first TV station, Good Morning Utah at 6 starts now. Good morning, Utah. I'm Brian Carlson. And I'm Sarah Martin. It's 6 a.m. this Wednesday. The Wasatch Front waking up to another messy morning commute today. Lots of snow. And it's a snowy one out there this morning. This is a live look. This downtown just off of 11 South and I-15. You can see that snow still coming down out there this morning. The roads are snowy. Cars are going really slow with that out there today. Absolutely dicey. Crews reopened Big Cottonwood Canyon around 4.30 this morning. They tweeted out this photo of some control happening in that area. Traction laws are in effect, though. If you're going up Big Cottonwood Canyon, chains 4 by 4 is required. Little Cottonwood Canyon, though, still closed in both directions. UDOT tweeted out this video just this morning. They want to make sure we are safe before we're headed up those that canyon. The town of Alta still under interlodge, meaning everyone's got to stay indoors because of high avalanche danger. No estimated time frame at this point of when Little Cottonwood Canyon will reopen. You see them clearing the road up the canyons. You've got the plows out on the freeways here as well. So it gives you a sense for how much work that has to be done out there this morning. You may see some of those plows out there as you leave the house. Of course, we're of course following all the latest with this development on the storm this morning. We've got team coverage here for you of what you can expect. Meteorologist Adam Carroll following the storm from our Pinpoint Weather Center. Absolutely, but we have Jared Jutnani live there this morning watching all of that snow for us. He's live in holiday. What do you see in this morning, Jared? Well, good morning. Before we get to the roads, next to this tree here, if you have these large trees here in the front of your yard, they're accumulating all this snow. You might want to. Kick, them, kick the snow off this morning to avoid, you know, it being weighted down and potentially falling over. That's just some advice I noticed here standing next to this tree. But take a look. We're on the corner of Big Cottonwood Road and Holiday Boulevard. This area is getting plowed pretty consistently, but still there's a lot of snow accumulation out here. Poor visibility, slick, slushy driving conditions. It's very icy out here. Folks should take it slow. We do have a warning from the Utah Department of Transportation this morning. Take a look at this map. Folks that are living in this area here are asked to not drive on the roadways until after 10 a.m. And that's because the snow is falling faster than our snow plows could get to. Take a look at this live interactive map from the Utah Department of Transportation. You can see where those plows are spread out throughout the state. Definitely spread thin this morning trying to hit all of the trouble spots. Back out here live, we are at the cotton bottom here in Holiday next to this outdoor bench. You can see just how much snow has accumulated. I don't have a ruler on me, unfortunately, Adam. I I'm not good with measurements or numbers, so I don't know how uh, much snow this is or if this is a good indication of just how much has fallen. But it's light, fluffy stuff stacking up here nicely. Looks like a pillow. You can get kind of an idea of just how much snow is falling in this area along the east benches in Holiday this morning. But again, uh, folks are advised not to travel until after 10 a.m. because it is slick conditions, poor visibility, and a lot of fresh snowfall. Reporting live, Jared Jotanini, ABC4 News. Looks like he snowed in there at the cotton bottom this morning. Oh, he sure is. And you know what? It, and, and it may obviously be difficult to have that ruler, but one thing he could do if he trusts his phone and it's waterproof, he could take it out. Mine's 6.9 inches, <laughs> right? There you go. There's seven right there, Jared. There, put it right there. And then you can kind of more or less guesstimate. Not the best science, but there you go, right? Improvising. Or hey. you could dip your hand down in there and see where it hit <laughs> right there, and then take your phone and measure where the hand went. There you go. Whatever you want to do, uh, you know, what floats your boat. But, you know, we are dealing. 
dealing with a rough commute today. It has just been atrocious in Salt Lake County. Parley Summit, portions of Davis County. Also, if you're heading towards Tooele, it's going to get worse. It's also going to get worse in Utah County. I know it's been bad here around Box Elder, especially around Brigham City here this morning. But you can see that we've still got the snow showers here in far northern Utah, but not nearly what we're seeing here across the Salt Lake Valley, portions of uh, uh, southern Davis County. Uh, and as we get a little bit closer, we have had, we continue to have this very, very heavy band of snow kind of moving in that uh, direction, that northwest uh, to southeast direction here through the valley, and a giant gap in terms of snowfall here for the southwestern side. I'm sorry if you live in that area, but you know, eventually you'll fill in here by the time we get into the later morning hours. And you, wow, we're seeing still some uh, east bench snowfall here falling around the Bountiful area. Also, uh, the uh, Salt, Salt Lake area east benches as well, the Tooele benches. But again, not a whole lot going on with regards to snow here for the southwestern side of the valley. But we also do have the winter storm warnings up through 5 p.m. today for Salt Lake Tooele. But winter weather advisories through 11 a.m. for the rest of the area, including the mountains nearby, except for the I. Oh my gosh, goodness, the I 80 mountains south. Look at this. All of this has now popped up here in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I don't even need think I can keep up with it all, but I'll keep an eye on what is the worst going on out there in terms of our traffic. But we do have um, issues here both in northern Utah and Salt Lake County. We've got road snow here throughout the Salt Lake Valley. Uh, Parley's is a mess again this morning. The e I-215 I East Bench here is snow covered. I, I mentioned Parley's. We've got extreme drive times here. We've got chain up area as good, well. Very, very busy. Uh, going over to Park City, over 50 minutes. Uh, around 15 to 20 minutes on the East Bay Bell and then the West Side. 15 minute normal drive time, 42 minutes I 215 westbound to I 15 southbound, guys. Ooh, all right, thanks so much, Adam. Stay mm -hmm. home if you can. We've seen hundreds of crashes over the last few days because of this snow, and troopers say in a lot of them, unprepared drivers are to blame. So before you head out in the snowy weather, troopers want to remind you clear all of the snow from the windows and the top of your car. That swirling snow can blind you and other drivers around you. Check the tread of your tires, make sure your windshield wipers are working, and then once you're on the road, remember to turn on your lights and, of course, slow down. Just the other day, I, I was at a traffic signal down in the Sandy area, and a, a truck tried to stop a, at a light next to me, and all the snow on top of that truck went down on the driver's windshield. If your windows have obstructed visibility, your tires are bald, or especially if you're driving too fast for conditions and you crash, you can absolutely get a ticket. And here's a heads up if you live in the Canyon School District. Because of all that snow today, all classes will be held remotely. The Canyons District decided to move to online learning to follow the state transportation experts' recommendation to avoid traveling on the roads this morning. So the district says instruction today will fall in line with those new state rules that allow school districts to treat snow days as remote learning days. And University of Utah students expect a delay in person learning won't start this morning until 11 a.m. The university says if professors can move their classes online, they should and let their students know that delayed start will not impact online classes or campus employees already working remotely. The winter storm forcing Salt Lake Community College, they are actually canceling all in person classes until noon today. Online classes, though, will continue as scheduled. And offices for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints not opening this morning until 11 a.m. as well, delayed for weather conditions as well. The church says employees and service missionaries won't be expected to work before 11. They say anyone who works for the church from home will work a regular day. Count on ABC4 to bring you the latest on today's storm and all of our future storms, both on air and online at ABC4.com. And today's winter storm is affecting people scheduled to get a COVID-19 vaccine. The Salt Lake County Health Department says due to the weather, vaccine appointments for today are now moved to Sunday. This includes vaccines at Mountain America Expo Center in Sandy, the Maverick Center in West Valley, and the Salt Palace downtown. The appointments moved to Sunday will be at the same time and same location as your original appointment. And snow is also forcing some COVID-19 testing locations to close for the day. The state health department says those testing sites in Clearfield and Salt Lake County, like at the Maverick Center, they're both closed. 
In Weber County, vaccine doses are available today at some pharmacies. A limited number of doses available at these pharmacies you're seeing on their on your screen. Appointments only for Utahns currently eligible, and they'll be filled on a first come first serve basis. So to get one of those appointments, go to WeberMorganHealth.org to get an appointment. And here's your morning update on COVID-19. Utah had 591 new cases yesterday. So that brings our state total to 362,000. 532,000 Utahns have received the vaccine. 272 COVID patients are currently being treated in Utah hospitals, and one more Utah has died for a total of 1,797. If you look at our last seven days, you see our daily case totals popping up. Right now, we're averaging 950 new cases a day. That's the green line on your screen. Our testing positivity rate now down to 13.7 percent. And impeachment fallout continues here in Utah. We've reported some Republicans want to censure Mitt Romney for how he voted in the trial. Now some Democrats working to unseat Mike Lee for how he voted. The group called Humans Against Mike Lee launched yesterday. Their goal is to unseat Senator Lee in two years when he's up for re-election. The group calls the senator an extremist and is raising money to get him out of office. 610 is the time coming up on GMU. Utah isn't the only state getting hit with this winter weather. See the con severe conditions leaving millions nationwide without power. And because of those power outages in Texas, oil and gas prices could change. Learn how soon we could see those prices go up. Coming up in your Good Morning Utah Business Report. Time now for your weather on the fours. Welcome back to Utah. Okay, Adam, I feel like yesterday's commute was like a warm up snowy commute. Sure, I <laughs> and mean. And today we're really getting it. Well, I mean, we've got to have a warm up, right? It's just like, you know, I feel like today's commute, at least in the Salt Lake Valley, is like a marathon. You're, yeah. so, you're not really looking forward to it to begin with. Uh, most of you won't take two hours to finish. And by the time <laughs> you're done, four, five, six hours later, you're just, you're exhausted, right? And exactly. Unfortunately, that's what it's been like here this morning. Uh, Deer Valley, it's hard to see their numbers on this side, but Ski Utah's report just came out about nine inches of new snow at Deer Valley. However, Alta's just came out. 30, 24 hour, 30 inches in the last 24 hours, 61 inches in the last 48 hours, folks. That is five feet of snow. And that's not even concluding the last two. Incredible, really, week of storms for the Cottonwoods. We needed this so bad. In terms of satellite radar, this is the low resolution satellite radar we're seeing, uh, you know, 
pockets of heavier bands of snow in northern Utah, lighter snow as well across the north, and it's snow showers here in portions of southern Utah. But overall, look at how more or less maybe the flow is starting to switch a little bit to more northerly. See how that flows more or less starting to push straight south? Yeah, that's indicative that we're seeing a more northerly flow, which would just push everything through the Salt Lake Valley into Utah County in the next uh, couple of hours here. And that does mean that Tooele would pick up more in the way of heavier snow bands because they do phenomenal in a northerly flow. Now, looking closer here to the Salt Lake Valley, very, very heavy snow along the I-80 corridor right now, going east or west here along I-80. Also the 201 uh, and then northern ends of Bangor, but very, very heavy snow here across the Tooele East Bench. Also a new round of heavier snow around Farmington, Centerville, Bountiful, East Bench side. Uh, still heavy snow around Salt Lake City. Uh, and then, of course, the East Bench of Salt Lake County still seeing it as well. Uh, getting a little bit closer, we can see the darker shades of blue here. Uh, very, very heavy snow uh, falling along I-215, which has just been so hit with snow all morning long. Uh, jackknife trailers, all sorts of accidents as well. Uh, 215 still having lots of issues. Uh, uh, east benches here, those secondary roads, you're, it's going to take you a long time to get to freeways. And even when you get there, uh, it's still going to be rough. And then look at I-80, very, very heavy bands coming through I-80 into Tooele County. Now more of Tooele is getting involved. I said, the northerly flow's kicking in, and now that's going to be an area that's going to see it. And you can see how Futurecast starts to push that nor into a more northerly flow right through the valley. It's coming and aligning perfectly with what's happening on radar, but it's still another round of very, very heavy snow. But now it looks like that maybe southwestern sides of the valley that hasn't seen much in the way of snowfall are going to start getting into it here. And that's going to extend all the way into far, farther southern Utah County. Uh, and then by the time we get into the later uh, afternoon hours, it's just becoming more snow showery here uh, around the area. And then we're just set and done by 10 o'clock tonight. We're going to take a breather for a day. Uh, additional snowfall, honestly, we're going to likely see more than this right now with how long these bands have set up and haven't moved much. But we'll keep these in the conservative route. But, you know, Tooele and Salt Lake are going to be your bull bullseye zones, including areas around Bountiful Bench, six to eight inches. Elsewhere, not as much more on the lighter side of things, but southern Utah County, because of Utah Lake, Woodland Hills, Elk Ridge, uh, Payson, you're going to probably do well as well. And of course, the Cottonwoods, we know, always do. Uh, 6 p.m. time frame is when this expires, at least the avalanche warning will, because of the new heavy snow. Salt Lake area mountains, still under the extreme avalanche danger. Do not, in any circumstance, go into the backcountry. You will risk your life doing so. 34 in Salt Lake today, 52 St. George. That's the name of the game, and St. George is in the 50s here for the next few days. Sunny skies, a little warmer as we head into the weekend, a little bit more cloud cover as well. Snow ends later today in the Wasatch Front. Tomorrow, quieter. Friday into Saturday, another storm system, more snow for the mountains. Just mountains of accidents out there right now, stretching from Utah County to Davis and Weber counties as well, over into Summit County. Uh, it's very difficult to highlight all of these, uh, but we can show you that the entire Salt Lake Valley, uh, east and west belt, is having lots of problems. Bangor as well. I-80 now is going to have some issues, but look at all these different cameras showing major backups here. 56 west here, about 35th south. Lots of cars backed up here down the line. And then, of course, Parley's going to be an issue, which is why you're nearing an hour from Salt Lake to Park City right now. You saw that real-time update, 52 minutes. East Belt, I-15 and I-80, you're looking at 15 to 20-minute drive times. Uh, the West Belts are 45 minutes. It's triple the time that it would normally take. 60 minutes along Bangor. Uh, also, you're looking at Provo to Salt Lake, 64-minute drive time. Salt Lake to Ogden, 54 minutes, 51 minutes. Yeah, this is just a mess, guys, and this is going to take you a long time. Even starting Summit is almost double the time. All right, thanks, Adam. Utah, not alone in our winter weather today. Cold temperatures are hitting places that just aren't prepared for this type of cold. Yeah, you're talking Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, already hit by a winter storm over the weekend, getting hit again. And coming up, another big storm headed for the Northeast. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has the latest. This morning, parts of the country already pummeled by snow and ice, now getting hit with a second round. Overnight, another storm moving into Oklahoma, where the capital recorded its coldest temperature in more than a century Tuesday, negative 14 degrees. 
Bursting pipes interrupted lunch at this restaurant in Tulsa. <laughs> A similar scene at this apartment building in Texas. It's pretty cold inside. Last night, the temperature got down to about 37 degrees. The surge in demand for energy pushing the Texas power grid to the brink. More than 4 million customers losing power. There's a huge demand, a very limited supply. It is a system-wide failure across, across the state. Some homes losing heat for more than 36 hours in single-digit temperatures. Across the state, long lines for food. Shoppers at this grocery store in Dallas using their cell phone flashlight to see. Adding to the blackouts, natural gas, wind, and nuclear facilities also being knocked offline. But many are now pointing the finger at ERCOT, the nonprofit organization which has controlled most of the state's energy since 2002 when Texas privatized its electric grid. This, this was a, a total failure by ERCOT. They showed that they were not reliable. In the meantime, new storm watches and warnings are stretching to Virginia with the threat of another round of damaging storms, just one day after a deadly tornado in Brunswick County, North Carolina. ABC's Victor Okendo is there. Here it was an EF3 tornado with winds up to 160 miles per hour. It struck in the dead of night. The walls and the roof of this warehouse peeled right off. At least three people were killed. This next storm will then take aim at the Northeast. Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News. New York. And so if you're like one of the millions of people without power, what do you do to stay warm in the cold? Here's a few tips if you find yourself in a similar situation. Close your blinds and curtains to prevent that warm air from escaping through your window. Stuff towels and blankets in front of your doors to stop the air from escaping out from underneath those doors. Layer your clothing, break out the blankets, or leave your home altogether and go to a warming center or a public building. 21 now. Coming up on Good Morning Utah, lawmakers move forward with a settlement for the parents of murdered Ute athlete Lauren McCluskey when the House will have a final vote on that resolution. And we're keeping an eye on our roads this morning, this messy commute. This is a live look, I-15, right near downtown Salt Lake. Our camera here going northbound. That accident you're seeing, a car off to the shoulder is in the southbound lanes. We're seeing lots of accidents like this one this morning, so please be safe. Take your time. We've got more weather coming up after this.
Time now for your weather on the fours. Well, unfortunately, if you thought yesterday's uh, commute uh, was bad, well, today is ramped up times 10. Call yesterday the appetizer to what is the main event right now, especially those that live in portions of Davis, definitely Salt Lake County, uh, especially the northern end of Salt Lake and eastern side, and then, of course, the Tooele Valley, where we're seeing very, very heavy snow here on the northern end of Salt Lake, but still a big gap in the coverage here across places like Harriman, but that'll eventually fill in, and the flow starting to shift to the north. Now, seeing St. George out there, 52 today, 53 tomorrow, sunny skies, and then we'll get warmer. It should be actually a pretty nice seven-day stretch there. So for the Wasatch Front, snow comes to an end later this afternoon, as does the winter storm warning. 35 tomorrow. Another storm comes in, though, here for that rain, uh, for, with more rain and snow for valleys, and then snow on Saturday. We have just so many accidents out there from Weber County, Box Elder County, all the way down into Utah County and Summit County, with the majority of them here in Salt Lake County because this is where the heaviest snow has been over the last several hours and will continue to fall as well. So as we get a little bit closer, I just want to highlight this is the whole 215 belt. I-80, uh, I-15, Bangor. They're all just a mess. Of course, Parley's here. We have got so much going on out there right now with regards to our traffic. Here's some of our cameras that we're seeing as well. Everything is snow covered. Uh, Bangor, though, you can see that we've got some back up there uh, on the east side benches where we've got the snow. This is at the uh, I-215, I-15 interchange, a little bit farther north towards Salt Lake City. Uh, lots of backup here on that I-15, 1300 south section of the road. But how about our drive times? Because that's an area that we've been monitoring all morning long, nearing an hour for both going to and from Park City, guys. And we're also looking at the east belt being 17 to 18 minute uh, to drive times right now, 43 minutes on the west side uh, belt. Bangor's over an hour if you're heading uh, northbound to I-80. Provo to Salt Lake is 70 minutes right now. Uh, Ogden to Salt Lake, 53 minutes, but around that time going south. And uh, Sardine doesn't look good either, guys. All right, thank you, Adam. On Utah's Capitol Hill, the next chapter in the tragedy of murdered U of U student Lauren McCluskey. Yeah, Utah lawmakers took the first step to approve a $13.5 million legal settlement for parents of murdered University of Utah student Lauren McCluskey. Parents Jill and Matt McCluskey agreed on a settlement amount back in October, but since the settlement exceeded a million dollars in state entities, it needed approval from the state legislature. That payment is the largest in Utah history. The settlement got unanimous support from a House committee yesterday and now moves on to the full House. And new this morning, a bill aimed at encouraging Utah schools to retire their Native American mascots failed in the Utah House. The bill sponsor, Democratic Representative Elizabeth Waite. She's an alumni of Bountiful High School, and Bountiful High recently changed its mascot from the Braves. In a long and contentious process, several conservative lawmakers spoke against this resolution. Only a few Republicans voted in favor of it, and it ultimately failed. Also this morning, state lawmakers are working on a bill intended to reduce confusing leadership on the state's homeless issues. According to the Deseret News, Bill 347 creates a central state office to deal with homeless problems. The House would be, or the office would be overseen by a deputy director chosen by the governor and then address the homeless issues. The bill will get its first hearing this morning. Also on the Hill, the debate over vaping ramping up this session with the bill trying to undo some vaping restrictions in Utah. Recently, our legislature gave our health department the power to limit nicotine sales and quantities in Utah, but now a lawmaker wants to take that power back. SB 134 would make nicotine quantities a legislative item and would raise the state's new nicotine limit in vape products from 24 to 65 milligrams per milliliter. That ought to be the role of the legislature that makes that determination. Naturally, it should be with the health department. There's not really scientists in the, in the legislature. This is a health issue. SB 134 has passed a Senate committee. It's headed to the full Senate for a vote. Time now 628, still ahead on GMU. Snow making Utah roads dangerous today. Those snow plows were out overnight, but that doesn't mean the roads are clear. Here, what travel experts are recommending drivers do in a live report. Plus, Utah Red Cross helping veterans. Here are the free resources for troops and their families in a live interview. As we head to the break, here's a live look outside. That's downtown Salt Lake, and that's a live look at all that snow. We're back with your weather on the fours and tell you what you can expect if you head out the door this morning. Right after this.
Live from Utah's first TV station. Good morning, Utah at 630 starts now. Good morning, Utah. I'm Sarah Martin. And I'm Brian Carlson. The Times 631 on this Wednesday. And we're dealing with another messy morning commute. Here's a live look at I-15. This is downtown, just about 11 south. You see, there might be a car that slid off the road right there on the side of the freeway. Everybody else right there taking it slow out there this morning, and that's what you should be doing if you're out there on the road. Crews reopened Big Cottonwood Canyon around 4.30 this morning. They closed the road overnight because of some avalanche hazards. Traction laws are in place, though. Chains or 4 by 4s are required if you're headed up Big Cottonwood Canyon today. Little Cottonwood Canyon, though, still closed in both directions. You know, tweeted out this video of some control work happening in the area just this morning. So far, no estimate of a time of reopening Little Cottonwood Canyon. So the snow plows obviously up the canyons and, and they're out on the freeway here as well. But they have a lot of work out there, especially with how much snow we saw overnight and into this morning. So if you're leaving the house, you probably see them out there this morning when you head out the door. So what can you expect in your morning drive? Again, today we have team coverage for you. Meteorologist Adam Carroll following our new snow from the Pinpoint Weather Center. We begin though with ABC 4's Jerry Jotnini. He is live in Holiday working with that snow. It looks like he's right off of I-215, 62nd South. What do you see in this hour, Jared? Hey guys, yeah, good morning. We're at the cotton bottom here, and they have this huge tree in the front of their uh, restaurant here. And it, it's a good reminder if you're waking up this morning, you might want to get some of this snow off of the limbs so it doesn't weigh it down and potentially cause it to knock over. But hey, take a look behind us. This is the intersection of Big Cottonwood Road and Holiday Boulevard. You can see cars going through this morning, slow going, poor visibility, slick, slushy conditions. A lot of ice out on the roadway. Snow plows are doing their best to get out here and clear this area. But folks this morning will be waking up using uh, one of these to clear off their cars. They shouldn't be going anywhere, so they'll have the time. And it's because the Utah Department of Transportation warning folks not to leave, advising them to leave after 10 a.m. Take a look at this map. These areas shaded right here are the areas where uh, this warning is in effect. If you live in this area, the Utah Department of Transportation asking you not to leave your house until after 10 a.m. because the conditions are so poor and because it's challenging for snow plows to get out and make sure the roads are safe. The snow is coming down so fast that there's not enough plows. Take a look at this uh, live map from the Utah Department of Transportation. You can kind of get a sense of where all these snow plows are throughout the area. Already spread thin, working hard, trying to make sure all the roads are safe. It could be some time before your neighborhood gets plowed. They're trying to clear all those major roads First, back out here live again, we're at the cotton bottom here in Holiday, and you can see just how much snow, and just for you folks inside, I was able to find a 32-ounce water bottle to compare it to how much ice is here. So this is on the bottom, 32-ounce water bottle. I'm still not good with math. That's maybe three more inches above it. This is a bench here outside, an outdoor seating area, because obviously COVID-19, they have to you know, have some other options for folks, but because of all this fresh snowfall that's been coming down, it doesn't look like eating outside is going to be an option anytime soon. But again, snow falling throughout the morning along uh, the east bench here where we are, so be mindful. Again, the Utah Department of Transportation asking folks not to leave their homes until 10 a.m. Live Jared Jotanini, ABC 4 News. When you don't have a ruler, you just kind of go with what you got, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like sure it's going to make for a fun <laughs> afternoon for kids. Lots of great skiing. If we can get through this morning commute. True. You know, I'm going to have to do some math here, 32 ounces, and then we're going to have to add a few more inches. We'll have to maybe figure that out here with some uh, non-exact science here, <laughs> folks. But, but we are seeing a lot of it. Jared's on the east bench and sitting on a bench. Wild concept, isn't it? Uh, a heavy mountain and road snow here throughout the Wasatch Front this morning. It's red across the board. Now, even though that you might not be dealing with uh, the nasty roads out there like Salt Lake and even portions of Tula County is and Davis County, uh, it's 
likely places like Utah County are going to get in, in this thing uh, soon enough because the snow is starting to head nor uh, southward, almost in a north-south direction because the flow is starting to shift. A lot of what's happening in northern Utah is more or less coming to a close, and we're going to start picking it up here across Utah County. Very heavy snow now on the west side of the valley. Here it comes because that flow is shifting, so it's going to start heading straight for Harriman. So Harriman, folks, if you think that you didn't see a whole lot from this storm, you're about ready to see some. And the Tooele uh, benches as well are seeing the snow uh, starting to let up a little bit here across Davis County, southern Davis County. Very heavy snow here where Jared is, which is about right there uh, on the 215 quarter, but the east benches of Salt Lake City. Magda's getting absolutely socked right now. And then, of course, uh, you're looking at UT 36 right into Tooele. You're starting to pick up the pace with snow. We've got so winter storm warnings from Tooele over to Salt Lake, and then the I-80 uh, mountains, uh, or the mountains south of I-80, excuse me, until 5 p.m. Everybody else will expire at 11 a.m. Uh, there's more accidents every time we look at this thing. Uh, you can't even keep up with it. You really just have to look at the worst accidents out there. And even then, you're trying to find the cameras in the area, and so many of them are completely snowed, uh, snow covered out there. But road-wise, it's just a mess, especially along I-15 and westbound here is where we've seen a lot of the accidents out there. And as we get in a little bit closer, uh, yellows and reds all over this map from the east side to the west side. But I-15 and 215 have been just the worst here this morning, unfortunately. And of course, Parley's is in a, a very good situation as well. But we are still monitoring that. You can see uh, cameras out there are still road snow covered. And we are continuing to look at these drive times throughout the morning, guys. All right, thanks so much, Adam. Keeping us safe. Count on ABC4 News to bring you the latest on today's winter storm, future storms on air and online at abc4.com. We often hear about the struggles U.S. veterans go through returning home from being deployed overseas. But there are free resources to help those troops as well as their families. So joining us to tell us more about those resources, Adam Whitaker. He's a veteran and regional chief development director for the Utah Red Cross, joining us through Zoom this morning. Adam, thanks for being with us here today. You bet, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. What are some of the common struggles veterans experience when they return home from duty? You know, it's, it's a great question. As a veteran myself, I have some uh, understanding of what that can feel like. I spent some time overseas and after, in a few cases, being away for weeks at a time or, or months at a time, and some, and some are gone much longer, of course, uh, it can be tough to reacclimate to a regular civilian lifestyle and, and setting. So it's important that uh, these groups, that our veteran communities have help. So what are some of those ways that it's tough to just kind of get back to normal life? Can you give us an example? It really is. The Red Cross provides uh, resiliency workshops, and these workshops really address some, some, some key needs. Uh, effective communication, uh, stress resolution and management, uh, the ability to connect, reconnect with kids who sometimes don't understand why mom or dad has been gone so long and what they've been doing, uh, coping with developments based on the return after deployments, those are some of the things that we address with these resiliency workshops. So it's not just for the veterans themselves, but also for, to help their families connect as well. That's a, that's a great question. Important distinction. That's, that's correct. It's for veterans. It's for active duty military members. It's for their families. And in some limited cases, it's even for those caregivers who are there to help the, uh, the, the wounded recover, the ill recover, uh, the, the long-term chronically sick. Um, e even those folks have access to these resources. And you mentioned that there's a couple of workshops. How, how, what's the, uh, uh, the spread of those workshops? Kind of what, how, how wide are the topics that they cover? Yeah, there's, there's four or five topics. There are four specifically that, that help and deal directly with active military and veterans and their families. The, others, the other workshop is for those caregivers. Each is about 60 minutes long. Uh, it's done online. Confidentiality is kept. Uh, that online set, setting, obviously, is to help with ease of access. Uh, it also is for safety, especially in today's COVID environment. And uh, that, again, is set up uh, to give uh, active duty members transitioning and veterans long term the ability to cope best, sometimes on the heels of really tough experiences during their active duty military service. Good reaction to those workshops so far? So, so far, so good. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people that use them uh, in Utah uh, and across our region, across the nation, really. So it's a service, again, that's free, I should mention, uh, to everyone who takes them, and we make them as, as broadly available as possible. This how is they, an important need to meet. How do they connect with those workshops? 
The, the best way is to go to redcross.org and you can search for reconnection workshops. Uh, you can also click on a reconnection workshop button that's, that's uh, easily located there. And we'll make it easy for people at home. You just go to our website, abc4.com slash GMU, and we'll connect you to the Red Cross website where you can find those workshops. Adam Whitaker there with the Utah Red Cross. Thanks for being with us today. You betcha. Thank you. Such a great cause there. 641 now coming up on Good Morning Utah. Utahns in a record number of weather-related crashes. What you need to know before braving the storm in your car this morning. Plus, a volcano erupts in Italy. Look at that. See the lava flowing, the debris forcing places to shut down. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Adam Carroll, weather rate certified nine years in a row. All right, let's check your weather. You know, Adam, I know it's going to be different depending on where you live, yes. but it's a mess out there this morning. It is. You know, it's mainly uh, associated to southern Davis County, Salt Lake County, most of Salt Lake County, to uh, portions of the east benches of Tooele County, Brian. And it's all because that's where the bulk of the snow has been this morning. So new points north, maybe not as bad. Point south, at least right now, not as bad. Uh, Parley's is not great, uh, again. Uh, Evanston, very much snow covered here along I-80. This is something you have to keep in mind. It's snowing heavily, too, in Evanston. Uh, but any farther south in Utah County, well, you know, it's a normal day commute because we haven't had the snow in this area. But we have seen some you know, across the high, high benches of uh, San Pete, and we're still seeing plenty of snow out there, and it's really coming down now. The lake influen is influenced a lot uh, across uh, Salt Lake and Tooele counties right now as that flow has more or less shifted north to south. And you can see how 
we were a while seeing that northwest flow, but now that the winds have shifted sh north to south, it's just completely pushing that snow straight southward. And that's where Tooele is going to get involved here soon enough. And the uh, southwestern side of the Salt Lake Valley that hasn't seen much. We're starting to quiet things down farther north. But it's very, very heavy snow in West, west Valley uh, along uh, Bacchus U111, uh, Mountain View Corridor, uh, Magna, and then also along I-80, the stretch of I-80 heading into UT-36 for Tooele. Uh, also, Bangor Highway, seeing some very, very heavy snow. We've got a lot of heavy snow on the move as it heads southward. And finally, southwestern sides of this county are going to get some snow if you are looking for snow. And then as we get a little bit closer to the northern end, including the Salt Lake City area, uh, we might be tailing end of this uh, heavy snow here soon enough in the next hour or so. But it's going to continue here for the eastern benches uh, for the uh, duration of this storm. And then here it comes here across portions of that southwestern side that has been pretty much in a snow hole not much longer as it continues to dump on the 12th. Willie East benches right now. And e even future cast shows how it's starting to move in a north to south direction. Very, very heavy here. Uh, 7 a.m. hour, 8 a.m. hour, it shifts into southern Salt Lake County, into the entire Utah County area, Tooele, and then it continues to shift southward. Now, our futurecast model starts to not like the snow after about 10 a.m., but that's also when UDOT says that's about the time that you should be able to venture out again. So it will likely become more snow showery by then. And here you go in terms of numbers. Still high numbers for the benches of Salt Lake and Tooele, also for Davis County, also for the southern end of Utah County here, with plenty of snow in the the cottonwoods to be had, and some of our northern mountains will still pick up several inches, and even into our central mountains. But our avalanche warning exists because we still have plenty of snow coming, and we've had a lot of it. 61 inches of snow has fallen in the last 48 hours at Alta. That is incredible amounts of snow, which is why you're still in an extreme uh, avalanche danger for our Salt Lake area mountains with everybody else high. 30s and 40s for many. 52 in St. George, but only 28 in Ely and Rock Springs here today. And there will be sunshine across southern Utah. 52, 53, 61 on Friday. And then we get into a, a, a warmer setup for St. George. Very, very nice to start next week near 70 for the Wasatch Front. Snow ending here about midday, maybe some snow showers thereafter. Quieter day tomorrow. Another storm comes in Friday into Saturday. More accumulating mountain snow out there. And of course, uh, heading into next week, uh, we're going to start being able to take a breather. Uh, we've got 15, 20, 30 accidents out there and incidents from Summit County to Utah County, all the way up into Box Elder County right now. But the majority of them remain in Salt Lake County, where it's been very, very difficult travel here along I-15, along Bangor Highway, 215. You can see all the yellows and reds out there. It's starting to get really bad along I-80, also along the 201, 215 eastbound, uh, not great. 215 westbound, just as bad. You can see why there's road snow here throughout the area, but we're also having to deal with uh, snow across Parley's uh, areas across northern Utah, seeing road snow here from Clearfield, Ogden into Brigham City. Uh, Sardine has got some issues here this morning. Logan Canyon, here are a lot of drive times for you. Park City to Salt Lake, 62 minutes, so about an hour both ways. 24 minutes along the east belt, normally eight minutes. It's triple the time it's going to take you here from the eastbound side over to I-80 in Parley's. Uh, 49 minutes westbound. That's 15 minutes. We're also tripling the time there. 72 minutes along Highway uh, or Bangor Highway all the way up to I-80. You're looking at 67 minutes Provo to Salt Lake. That's some and going up because we've got incidents on the road. 57 minutes Ogden and Salt Lake. And finally, we've also got Tooele, which we're reaching. 50-minute uh, marks as well across the Tooele. Now, we can keep watching us on CW here at 7 a.m. for new, more news, weather, and traffic. All right, thanks, Adam. Time now for news around the world. In the Congo, Ebola making a comeback, and now the World Health Organization pushing vaccines into the region. The Democratic Republic of Congo, Congo officials confirmed four cases of the virus since February 7th. So far, 1,200 doses of the vaccine have arrived in the country. Health workers there, the first to be vaccinated in the city of Montedada, where the virus first emerged. In Colombia, architects have created a new way to shelter coronavirus patients where hospitals are full. These dome shaped structures are about five meters wide. They can house two. Two patients each and are connected by inflatable hallways. A set of eight interconnected domes can house 16 patients and they cost around $15,000. Officials began placing them in gyms and parking lots this week.
Italy's most active volcano erupted multiple times yesterday. Look at that. This is Mount Etna. Etna's southeastern crater blew ash spewed into the air. Heavy debris forced Italy's Catania airport to close for the day. Etna is a popular tourist destination. People travel from across the world to see these eruptions. Pretty cool. That's your news around the world. And in your business news, the freezing temperatures in Texas could drive up gas and oil prices. And Amazon faces a new lawsuit over unsafe work conditions. Here's your Good Morning Utah business report. New worries about the dangerous cold in Texas and what it can mean for oil and gasoline prices. Experts now think oil and natural gas production could be affected for days or weeks. Power outages have shut down refineries and pumps across the state. And icy roads in the Permian Basin, the country's biggest shale field, have put a virtual halt to trucks carrying fuel or supplies. And it's not just oil companies. The frigid temperatures and power outages across much of the country are forcing all sorts of closures. GM canceling shifts at plants in four states. Ford stopping production at a Kansas City plant to conserve natural gas. And UPS and FedEx warning that deliveries could be delayed. Plus, New York's attorney general is now suing Amazon, accusing the company of failing to provide safe working conditions during the pandemic at two New York City facilities. Amazon says its safety measures, quote, far exceed what is required under the law. And finally, the price of Bitcoin rising again. It topped $50,000 in trading on Tuesday, an all-time high. And that's your Good Morning Utah business report. We've seen hundreds of crashes over the last few days because of this winter weather. And troopers say a lot of them unprepared drivers at the wheel are to blame. Before you head out in this snowy weather, troopers want to remind you, clear the snow completely from the windows and the top of your car. That swirling snow can blind you and other drivers around you. Check the tread of your tires and make sure your windshield wipers are working. Once you're on the road, turn your lights on and slow down. Good reminders there. And here's a heads up if you live in the Canyon School District. Because of that snow today, all classes will be held remotely. The Canyons District decided to move to online learning to follow the state transportation experts' recommendation to avoid traveling on the roads this morning. The district says instruction today will fall in line with those new state rules that allow school districts to treat snow days as remote learning days. And this winter storm is also forcing Salt Lake Community College to cancel all in person classes this morning until at least noon. Online classes will continue as scheduled. University of Utah students expect to delay as well. In person learning won't start this morning until 11 a.m. The university says if professors can move their classes online, they should and let their students know that a late start will not impact online classes or anybody, any campus employees already working remotely. Offices for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints also on a delayed start. They won't open until 11 a.m., delayed also for these winter weather conditions. The church says services and employee service missionaries won't be expected at work before 11. They say anyone, though, who works from home will work a regular day. And today's winter storm is affecting people scheduled to get the COVID-19 vaccine. The Salt Lake County Health Department says due to the weather, uh, the vaccine appointments for today have been moved to Sunday. This includes vaccines at Mountain America Expo Center in Sandy, the Maverick Center in West Valley, and, of course, the Salt Palace downtown. Appointments moved to Sunday will be at the same time and location as your original appointment. And the snow is also forcing some COVID-19 testing locations to close for the day. The state health department says testing sites in Clearfield and there the Maverick Center in West Valley City are both closed. In Weber County, vaccine doses available today at some pharmacies. A limited number of doses are available at these pharmacies on your screen. Appointments, though, only for Utahns currently eligible. They'll be filled on a first-come, first-served basis. Go to WeberMorganHealth.org to get an appointment. Not the morning to get anything done outside today. No, and UDOT was right on the money telling people to stay home today. I mean, that's a rare thing. They don't usually release these types of urgent warnings because they knew what we've been forecasting, guys, and this was a bad day to be on the roads. And it continues to be as we continue to pick up the cars out there on our roadways and unfortunately we're picking up the accidents as well. But we'll get to drive times in just a second. Let's go over St. George one more time. 52 today. Nothing but sunshine down there. We're going Stay on the chillier side. Then we'll warm up here for St. George uh, for the weekend. For the Wasatch Front, snow will end here into the afternoon hours. We'll have a break tomorrow. More rain still coming in Friday into Saturday. Uh, and then we'll actually have a several day break with warmer temperatures out there. We have just a plethora of accidents from Box Elder County, Summit, Utah County, and the majority of them in Salt Lake County right now. And that is what it has been 
the biggest problem today is how long it's taking you to get places. So looking throughout much of the Salt Lake Valley where all the accidents are, which are aligning I-15, aligning the West 215 belt. We're also seeing road snow here in Brattleville Falls. Keep that in mind on US 189. It's going to be rough. And then back up into Salt Lake, lots of road snow out there as well, guys. And you're leading to drive times. Many locations here, including the East Belt, are triple the time it's going to take you to get places today. Incredible. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Adam. We've got a baby birthday today, and I'm really excited about this one. This is my grandma. This is Connie oh. Schroth. Look at her. Wow. That's a classic photo right, right there. Is that such a stunning photo? Obviously not a baby photo, but she's, you know, what a babe. I thought the photo was just perfect to use. Connie turns 83 today. She watches mm -hmm. us every morning. Connie, she happy birthday. From, is she in Utah or is she in California? She's in Utah. She is down in St. George. Oh. So Grandma Schroth is actually my grandma-in-law, but, you know, who Gosh. cares about that? <laughs> happy birthday, pearls. Grandma happy Schroth. Birthday, I know Connie. that photo. I can't get over it. Happy, happy birthday, birthday. We oh, love great. celebrating your families. Email us, news at abc4.com with that subject line, baby birthday. I will leave you with this. You can now buy the skinniest house in London. The home right here, we've got the visual. It's that blue one right in the middle. <laughs> it costs just under a million dollars. It's only six feet wide. Six feet. Five stories tall. <laughs> okay, so it's as wide as me. Yeah, it's as wide what as you. What did you say it costs? It costs just under a million dollars. Oh, you know, tough change. But they've got a great patio at the top that goes back to the Victorian era. So Probably there's some plus and minus amazing location. <laughs> Thanks for making this part of your morning. More local news coming up on Utah's CW30.